Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater, and uh, this is, I just got home from watching Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, and my extremely long and overbloated review is going to be linked below. It's like 24 minutes long. Interesting if you want to know more about the movie, but I will fully admit I rambled. But in that rambling, I came to a conclusion. I came to a realization. I came to something I wanted to share with you especially those of you that are big into Harry Potter. You're not going to want to hear this, but it is ultimately 100% true. Warner Brothers, in order to save the franchise, needs to neuter J.K. Rowling. They need to stop her. They need to basically lock her up in a room and just go, come up with a story. We're going to bring someone in to write it. You are now George Lucas. They need her to become the George Lucas of Harry Potter. And I know a lot of people out there don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that one damn bit because they go, well, she's written seven novels that have been turned into eight extremely popular and money-making movies. That is true. She has. She has made Warner Brothers literally billions of dollars. She herself is a billionaire. She owns this entire thing. How dare I, a simple muggle from Washington State, have the audacity to criticize the great J.K. Rowling. Well, let me ask all you guys a question. Have you read any of her other work? She has. She has other books that she's come out that have been, eh, okay. Right? They've done okay. But never anywhere near as big as Harry Potter. So, obviously, she's going to go back to the well. I called this back in 2007 when the last book came out. I called this in 2011 when the last freaking movie happened, right? We knew this was going to happen. We knew this was going to be a thing, that she was going to eventually go back to the well. So when they announced that Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was going to be adapted into a movie, i.e. just telling the story of Newt Scamander, not actually following the book, uh, it was going to be an interesting experiment. And I say that because it's an experiment, right? David Yates is going to direct. He directed the last few Harry Potter movies, right? And he did a good job. Uh, and then, of course, uh, J.K. Rowling was going to write the script. And this was her first time actually writing a screenplay, not a novel. You can't do as much exposition in a screenplay. And that was kind of a problem with Fantastic Beasts. The story was interesting, but the movie itself was ultimately a setup. And the movie itself didn't really have a lot there that kept you kind of begging for more. You only really cared when you discovered after the fact that it was going to be part of a five movie series. Sure, not eight films like Harry Potter, but they're going to do five movies to tell the story ultimately of Dumbledore versus Grindelwald featuring Newt Scamander. And they even said that Newt Scamander probably won't be in the last couple films, meaning he'll, he's got maybe one more in him, whatever his con, whatever Eddie Redmayne's contract is right now with Warners is probably going to be what it is. But for the most part, he doesn't have to be in it. After after Crimes of Grindelwald, by the way, there's going to be spoilers in this, by the way, just as an FYI. Uh, I know we're a couple minutes in. I'm, calling, I'm saying now spoilers. But basically, uh, he doesn't have to continue the story past maybe what comes next. He could be out the last couple ones. Uh, but they're going to keep him around because they want to have the whole tight cast there. I mean, and it's money. And it's it's mostly done with green screen. So it's easier <laughs> than, than not. But we're not talking about the production quality of Crimes of Grindelwald, which was not the best, by the way. The editing and cinematography were garbage, and the script was lackluster. Good story, but it just it was not there. It was just not there. Now, it's entirely possible that what I saw on the screen and what they shot are two different movies. What I saw on the screen could have been poorly edited and right, which it was, which then would have clipped out parts of the story. We know Warner Brothers is, is prone to do this based on what we saw off of uh, or after uh, uh, Batman v Superman. But this is J.K. Rowling. This is entirely at her feet on this one because she's the billionaire, the goose that laid the golden egg, so to speak, and Warner's is in need of a good franchise. So they're going to let her do what they can or do what she wants until it's no longer financially viable for them. Since this movie is looking to gross $250 million in its opening weekend, obviously they're not going to walk away from J.K. Rowling, but they should. 
They should turn her into a producer. They should have her plot out the events of the next three films and then bring in God. If it's even if it's Stephen Cloves again, fine, bring in somebody to write the script. Let me tell you guys why the movie suffered. Even the first one suffered from just so much unimportant chaff, right? There are scenes in the first movie that just don't need to be there. A lot of the stuff with the beasts, and I know that the idea there is fantastic beasts and where to find them, but the core underlying concept is the is the whole Credence issue. It is the uh, Grindelwald thing. It's all of that stuff going into it. Uh, the beasts took a back seat even in the movie that was supposedly all about them. In fact, the scenes with them, uh, while meant to be kind of endearing and showing a lighter side of Newt or how he works, ultimately stopped the story dead in his tracks and didn't benefit anyone. But they were there because that's how J.K. Rowling wrote them. Uh, again, even even parts of the, the action in the first movie just kind of felt overdone because that's what J.K. Rowling wanted, and you can tell that. This movie, same thing. Opening of the film, Gellert's Escape. Grindelwald's escape from the from the the U.S. magic people, whatever they're called, uh, and it's it's so over the top in regards to how it's written, right? Like he's not actually the one that is on the on the in the carriage. He is one of the other cops. Uh, he ends up, you know, uh, you know, uh, teleporting over to there uh, and then taking everybody out. And then and then dropping the ship or the, the carriage down into the water to where it fills up with water for no real apparent reason. And then it, it it's just it's just it was so dumb. But you could tell that J.K. Rowling was like, this sounds like a really cool idea. And maybe in a book it would be a cool idea, but not everything translates well from page to screen. We know this. And the way that it was shot, the way that it was cut together, just it looked cool. The idea was cool, but the execution was bad. You know, it was just bad. Uh, then you get the scene with, uh, you know, the inside of the, uh, the, the Paris, uh, the, whatever, like the diagonale, diagonale for Paris and whatever, they didn't really call it anything. Um, but you have the, the, the carnival, the circus freaks. And when they pack it up, it was just like, you see the whole thing dissipate. You don't need to, right? Again, it was just, it was just, I don't know if she wrote it like that. And she was like, no, we have to see it. But it was just extra stuff that didn't need to be there. It was just more CG. One of the biggest problems with this movie was ultimately all of the CG. And all of the CG that we see all comes from what she freaking wrote, right? She writes, Gellert pulls out a, a piece of paper and then uses magic to waft it over to Credence instead of just walking over the five feet and handing it to him. So the movie has to stop all action to focus on this piece of paper moving from one hand to another hand to show a mark, a place on a map. That was it. Right. Uh, the backstory with, uh, with Lestrange was interesting, but we didn't need two essential <laughs> backstory, which is what we kind of got. Right. We got the Lestrange at Hogwarts. Uh, you know, we got her there. We got her little five minute bit, which is, which was good. And I didn't, I didn't mind it. It also if it stopped the story dead in his tracks. Like I said before in my review, uh, her death uh, completely unearned, right? That was another thing too. We, we, we were supposed to emotionally care about her because we got this five minute backstory out of a two and a half hour long movie about her. We're supposed to care. We don't really have a reason to care, right? Her heroic death wasn't earned. It was just wasted, you know? So there was that too. It's just poor characterization on her part, considering that she was supposed to be part of a love triangle between Tina and Newt. And they kind of touched upon that. And when they touched upon that, it was good. When that was something that could have been an angle, it was interesting. But then they killed her off. So now it's no longer interesting. It's like, oh, she's just dead. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. 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 Oh, all right. And there's other little scenes here and there. Just the exposition sort of thing. Some of the, some of the dialogue was just, was just bad. Credence himself was just written very very wooden and and Ezra Miller to his credit played it the best that he could but I don't think anyone really knew how to work with Credence Credence worked well in the first movie because he was this boy who didn't know who he was uh was had a very super religious mom a foster mom who was violent and an extremist in her own right and that was she was you know he was a weapon in that regard now he's off the chain and trying to find his birth mother only to discover that he is and wait for it and this is a spoiler Dumbledore's brother, Aldous. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 
You know? Fine. Again, what? Like, we know the story exists. Like, we know, but it's like, why? You know, why? It did that to me just like, it wasn't like the, the reveal was meant to be like, you know, Vader to Luke, I am your father. But it was like, JK, like, that sounds like a really good idea, you know? And the whole thing too is like when they're in the Ministry of Magic in the Paris edition and like the really weird cat lady librarian pulls out all of her cats that are like going to attack him and they're on these these uh you know he pulls out the giant chinese uh falcor luck dragon cat and then the, he's on that thing and again it's all this cg they're running from these cats and there's all these ascending and descending um you know uh records and whatnot and it just was so over the top it didn't need to be there it was just so over the top that it just did not need to be there there was like such a heavy reliance on magic that you just go, this doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it's just, why is this happening? My brain is watching it, but at no point am I looking at this like, hmm, that's good. This is what we want. This is what we need. And this is all J.K. Rowling's writing. And this is all Warner Brothers going like, well, she's a billionaire who's exec producing these movies. So she kind of has say in that regard. And no one there is going to tell her no. No one is going to tell J.K. Rowling no. They need to step her back because she's gotten two movies under her belt with poor exposition, a lot of unnecessary scenes. Uh, and I guarantee you there's a lot more that was probably cut out of it that who knows, it could be interesting. It could be like the Batman v Superman extended cut where if they released the full thing, we'd go, Oh, now I get it. Now I like it a lot more, but we're never going to get that maybe on ABC family or Freeform or whatever. Uh, you know, but we're never going to get that. Uh, we're never going to get, those expanded upon stories. So what we see is, is this, and the thing is they need to tell her stop. They need to, they need to send her to a basic screenwriting class. One-on-one -on -one. like, look, you've written novels. This is not a novel. You can't do this much exposition. The dialogue needs to be snappier. The plot needs to move. And it's not just that scenes need to happen. There actually has to be purpose and reasoning for them. There were scenes in the movie that I'm like, you could take the scene and put the scene literally anywhere else. And it would probably fit just fine. That's what it felt like. The, not, the core story was good. Johnny Depp at the end addressing everyone was fantastic. That was great. There are high points to the script. But a lot of that was also Johnny Depp's performance and Yates directing. Cinematography still, that was actually okay there, but the rest of it was kind of crap. Right. Well, what, what we need is someone there to, to sit with her like, like, like Carrie Fisher with George Lucas on the prequels and sit down and go, this is shit. Here's, here's, here's what I recommend that they do. Okay. This is going to be an odd recommendation. It's never going to happen, but hear me out. Call in Bruce Willis. I know what you're thinking, huh? Why call in Bruce Willis? Because Bruce Willis has a tendency. He did this on the cop out, uh, shoot when Kevin Smith was directing, he pulled out the script and went to pages was like chaffa, chaffa, chaffa. and was just tearing stuff out that didn't need to be there. Did it make the movie any better? No but it probably could have been a lot worse than it was. <laughs> and so there's that they need to, they need to trim the fat. They need to focus on the story. The story is what's going to sell it. The story, the adaptations of those books, people got the exposition in those books. There's no exposition factor here that she can do. That's going to recreate what we get out of a book. So she's got to stop thinking like that. And they've got to tell her no, they've got it. They've got to take her draft and they've got to just send it to somebody secretly and to just snip it out a little bit and to tighten it up a little bit and send it back to her or just sit down with her and go, we're going to, we're going to pair you with somebody to help. Because if the stories keep going the way they're going right now, they're going to eventually fail because they're, they're, they're bloated. The movies are too long, too much CG, too much magic. And I know that sounds weird when it comes to a Harry Potter thing, like too much magic. That's lame. You can still have it. But again, CG is meant to be, uh, you know, it's, it's meant to be like the garnish on the dish, not the whole meal here. It's very much like 65% the meal. And you're just like, ah, oh, after a while, this becomes too much. It just becomes too much. And that is all her writing. And no one at Warner brothers, no one at Warner brothers sitting there and saying, you need to stop. So I think they need to sideline her for these next few films bring her on as a producer. Clearly she's got a vision for what she wants. That's good. Bring in somebody else to handle the nitty gritty of the dialogue and also the pacing and the action in the screenplay. 
and get a better editor, get a better cinematographer. And then I think the other movies will be fine. But that's my biggest complaint from uh, from this is that J.K. Rowling and her writing does not translate from a novelist to a screenwriter. It's an entirely different beast. Two films in. She's failed both times. This is amateur stuff that Warner's a billion dollar company with the largest market share theatrically worldwide should know better. But then again, based upon how they've handled the DCEU, I wouldn't put it past them to continuously keep failing. Anyway, those are my thoughts on this one. I am curious to know what you guys think. Do you think that uh, I'm right or I'm wrong? Does JK Rowling, uh, is she a good screenwriter or just a good storyteller? And would she be better served as just a producer uh, very hands-on by the way. I'm not saying cut her out, but, uh, the, but a producer, let me know. And, uh, if you guys haven't already, please thumbs up the video, subscribe. And, uh, I, I await all the, uh, all the fun comments. I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a great day and peace out.